Hey everyone, welcome to part 47 of my Pokemon game series in Unity. So in the previous video, we looked into how we can save simple data like the player's position. So in this video, we'll look at how to save the party of the player along with all the details of the Pokemon like HP, level, moves, etc. So if I load the game and if I start a battle, you can see that the HP and XP of my Pokemon is loaded correctly. Alright, so let's look at how to do that. Special thanks to all my Patreons for making the series possible. By becoming a Patreon, you can support me in the making of the series and get access to some cool rewards like the complete project files of the series, which also contains some advanced features that are not covered here. So, Let's start the video. So if you go inside player prefab, we have Pokemon party component over here. So let me open that. So we can make the Pokemon party implement the iSavable interface, just like we did for the player controller and use that to save the Pokemons in the party, right? But one problem here is the Pokemon party component is not only attached to the player, it's also attached to all the trainers, right? It's used to specify the party of each trainer. So we don't want to save the trainer's party, we just want to save the player's party, right? The trainer's party won't change, so there is no point in saving it. So what I'll do is, I won't save the player's party from the script, instead I'll do it from the player controller itself, right? From the player controller, we can easily get the player's party since they both are attached to the player. So in the player controller, right now, we are only saving the position. So here, we should also save the list of Pokemons in the player's party. So how can we save and restore multiple fields in these functions? So for that, what we can do is we can create a separate class that contains all the saveable fields. And from here, we can return the instance of that class and restore it inside the restore state. All right, so below the player controller, I'll create a new class called player save data. So this class will have a float array for the player's position. And we'll add the player's party later. First, let's try doing this and check if it works. So now in the capture state, I'll create an instance of the player save data. And in here, I'll assign the position. Okay, so I'll just copy this line and move it over here. And finally, instead of returning the position, I'll return the save data. So using this approach will allow us to save any number of fields from the player controller script. All right, so now while restoring it, we have to make sure to cast it into player save data and then we can get the position from save data dot position and we can use that to save the player's position okay so in order for this to work we'll have to make the player save data serializable as I mentioned in the earlier video, while using the saving system, we'll only be able to save classes that are serializable. So if we try to save this class, so let's actually run the game and try to save it. Okay, so if I try to save it, you can see this exception in the console. It says 
serialization exception player save data is not marked as serializable all right so if you get that error that's because the class you're trying to save is not serializable so all we have to do is add a serializable attribute on top of it so let's test it now okay so if i go somewhere and save now when i press load the player should go back to the saved position okay so that works so now we can easily add new fields to this class in order to save them so in order to save the list of pokemons in the player party we just need a list over here right we just need a list of pokemons But we are not going to do it like this. Let me explain why. So if you go to your Pokemon class, it has lots of data, right? It has the level, HP, XP, moves, stats, stat boost, and it also has a lot of data inside Pokemon base too. So here we have all the basic data like name, description, base stats and all that so while saving a pokemon should we save all this data no we don't have to save all this data we just have to save the data that will change right so all the data inside pokemon base is static and it won't change so we don't have to save all this and then data like volatile status and stat boost doesn't need to be saved since they are only valid inside the battle and they'll be cleared at the end of every battle right and then we also don't have to save the stats because the stats can be calculated if we have the base stat and the level okay so the point is we don't need to save most of the data inside the Pokemon class. So what are the data that we need to save? We need to save the level. We need to save the XP, HP, moves, status. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So since you only need to save few data from the Pokemon class, I'm not going to save the Pokemon class directly. Okay. Instead, I'm going to create another class called Pokemon Save Data that will contain all the saveable data of the Pokemons. Okay. So, what are all the saveable data? So, we need to save the HP. And then we need to save the level, the XP, and we need to save the status. So for the status, again, instead of saving the entire condition class, I just have to save the condition ID, right? All the data in the condition is static. So we just have to save the ID and we can use this ID to get the instance of that condition. So here I'll change this to condition ID and I'll make this nullable since a Pokemon might not have a status. Okay. So similar to the condition, we don't want to save the entire data inside the pokemon base class right but we need to save some unique id from the pokemon base class which we can use to load the entire pokemon base class all right so you can create a field like geoid for that if you want but what i'm going to do is i'm just going to use the name of the pokemon base class 
to uniquely identify a Pokemon. So inside the Pokemon save data, I'll also create a field for the name. And using this name, we can get all the base data of the Pokemon from its scriptable object, right? So next, inside the Pokemon class, below the init function, I'll create a new public function called get save data. And this function is going to return Pokemon save data. So this function will convert the current Pokemon class into Pokemon save data class. All right, so let's first create an instance of the Pokemon save data class. And in here, I'll assign all the fields in the Pokemon save data. Okay, so I need to assign name, the HP, the level, XP, and the status. So in case of status, I'll assign the ID of the status. Okay. So I'm using the null conditional operator here. So if the status is null, then null will be stored inside the status ID. So we'll also need to store all the moves of the of the Pokemon. So that's going to be a bit more complex. So I'll do that once we test this. Okay. So for now, this is all the data we need. So we can just return the save data from here. So we have a function to convert the Pokemon class to Pokemon save data class. So next we need a function to do the opposite. Okay, so we can actually use a constructor for that. So I'll create a constructor of the Pokemon class. And this will take a Pokemon save data class as a parameter. And it will use the save data to restore all the data of this Pokemon class. So let's restore the data one by one. Okay, so first I'll restore the HP. So I'll say it's HP equal to save data dot HP. And then I'll restore the level. So we are having an error here. So that's because this property doesn't have a setter. So you can either add a setter or you can simply assign it to the level variable. It doesn't matter how you do it. So next I'll assign the XP. All right, so now for the condition, I'll check if save data dot status ID is not null. And if that's the case, then we need to assign it to the status, right? So we can't assign the status ID to the status. What we have to do is using the status ID we have to get an instance of the status condition, right? So how can we get the status condition from its ID? So if you look at the conditions DB class, this is where all the conditions are stored. It's stored as a dictionary where the key is ID. So we can simply access it by passing the ID into this dictionary. So you can watch the video on status condition once again, if you don't remember how this was implemented. All right. So I'll say conditions DB. DB stands for database dot conditions. 
so this is our dictionary and we can simply pass the status id into the dictionary okay so we have an error here it's saying cannot convert the argument from condition id nullable to condition id so since status id is actually nullable we'll have to use status id dot value in order to get its value okay so this will restore the status of the pokemon all right and if the status id is actually null then i'll just set the status to null okay so we have restored all these data the only thing that's left to restore is the base data right so to restore the base we only have the name of the pokemon so we have to get the pokemon base class from the name right so we can do this just like we do for the conditions so just like the conditions db we can create a class called pokemon db that stores the base data of all the pokemons all right so i'm just going to comment this line for now and i'll go to unity inside scripts inside data i'll create a new script called pokemon db okay so this is going to be a plain class like the conditions db so here we will have a dictionary with name of the pokemon as key so the key will be string and the value will be a pokemon base class okay i'll call this pokemons so next i'll create a public function called init and inside this function we have to load all the pokemon base instances and store it in this dictionary okay so all the pokemons are inside the resources folder inside game so we should load all these scriptable objects and then we should save them into this dictionary so how can we load scriptable objects from the code so for that we can use resources dot load function okay i'm going to use load all since we want to load multiple objects and in here i'll pass the type of the object we want to load and finally we have to pass the path from which we should load so you can pass the path of this folder but i'm just going to pass empty string and if empty string is passed then this function will load the pokemon base class from all the directories in the project so if you look at the return type of this function it's an array of pokemon base so let me just store it in an array called pokemon array so in order for this function to work all your pokemon scriptable objects should be inside a folder called resources okay so when we created our moves and pokemons we made sure to put it inside a folder called resources so this was the reason for that this function will only load the objects that are inside a folder called resources so now we have all the scriptable objects here so next we can loop through each one of them and add it to our dictionary so let me loop through each pokemon and i'll add it to the dictionary and by the way we have to 
initialize our dictionary from here and now we can add it to the dictionary so for the key I will pass pokemon.name and I'll set it equal to the Pokemon base class itself all right so we have added it to the dictionary but this will result in an error if two Pokemons have the same name okay so when you create Pokemons like this there is a chance that you might give same name to multiple Pokemons so let's handle that case so that this code won't crash so before adding to the dictionary I'll check if the dictionary already contains a key with the name of this Pokemon so we can use contains key property for that and for the key I'll pass pokemon.name so if it already contains this name then I'll write an error like there are two Pokemons with this name and then I'll just continue the loop so that this line won't be executed alright so this is all we have to do in our init function and this will create the dictionary for us so let's actually call this function from our game controller so in the awake I'll also call Pokemon DB dot in it. I can't call this. So the reason is we have to make it a static function, right? Only then we'll be able to call it directly from the class. So yeah, that's working. Uh, so one thing to note while doing this is you have to use capital N for the name if you use small n then it will take the name of the scriptable object instead of taking the name from here okay so be sure to use capital N for name so now we have all the Pokemons inside this dictionary so next we should be able to retrieve the Pokemon's base data if we pass the name of the Pokemon right so you can make this dictionary public if you want and you can access it like we do for the conditions but let me just write it in a bit more cleaner way so I'll create another function for that so I'll call this function get Pokemon by name So it will take name as a parameter and it will return a Pokemon base class. Okay. So in here, first I'll check if the dictionary contains a Pokemon with this name. All right. Actually, I'll check if it doesn't contain the Pokemon and in that case I'll print an error like Pokemon with this name is not found in the database and then I'll just return null alright and otherwise if it contains the Pokemon then we can simply return Pokemons of name okay so now let's call this function from here so here I'll call Pokemon DB dot get Pokemon by name and for the name I'll pass save data dot name okay so we have another here oh that's because base also doesn't have a getter so I'll just assign it directly to the variable it doesn't make a difference since we are doing it from the same class itself so we have access to both 
the variable and the property so we have restored all the basic data of the pokemon so after this we have to do things like calculate stats and initialize anything that we have just like we do from our init function okay when you think of it restoring is actually kind of like an initialization so i'm going to call calculate stats in order to calculate all the stats at this level and then i'll just copy all this initialization code okay we should not set status to null since we are doing it from here so this will do all the initialization stuff so next as i mentioned before we should also restore the moves of the pokemon so i'll be doing that later for now i'm just going to generate the moves so that we can test everything else okay so now we have the function to get the saveable data of the pokemon and restore the pokemon using its saveable data right so one thing you have to make sure is the pokemon save data class should be serializable right so i'll add a serializable attribute on top of it okay so this class will be saveable now and by the way you might be wondering why i am using all public fields inside this class isn't that against good object oriented practice so the reason is this class doesn't have much use it's only used to save the data it's kind of like a struct so we don't have to waste time making the fields private and exposing it using properties and all that all right so now we have a way to save and restore the data of the pokemon so let's go to the player controller and save all the pokemons in our party so here instead of using a list of pokemon i'll use list of pokemon save data all right so next inside the capture state we need to assign the pokemons in the party so first i'll get the party using get component pokemon party okay so the pokemons in the party is list of pokemon class right but what we need here is list of pokemon save data class so what we can do is we can use the select function in link and for each pokemon i'm going to call the get save data function to convert it into pokemon save data class okay so finally i have to use to list function okay so this will convert the list of pokemons into list of pokemon save data so i have explained the select function in detail in a lot of previous videos so i'm not going to explain it now so next inside the restore function we have to restore the player's party so we can get the party from save data dot pokemons so this is a list of pokemon save data but we have to convert it into list of pokemons right only then we'll be able to restore it so i'll use the same method so i'll say pokemon dot select and for each pokemon save data i'll call the pokemon constructor and pass that save data 
in order to convert it into the Pokemon class. Right. We are calling this constructor that we created just now. Okay. And finally, I'll just use to list to turn it into a list. So we have to assign this to the party. So I'll, I'll get the party by get component of Pokemon party. And I'll assign it to the Pokemon snit. Okay, so we have an error here. All right, it's because the Pokemon's property doesn't have a setter. So I'll just add one. So here I'll say Pokemon's equal to value. All right, so now with the setter, the error over here should be gone. So this is all we have to do. So let's go to Unity and test if the player party is being saved properly. So I'll go have a battle with this trainer first so that my XP and HP will change. So let me beat this trainer real quick. All right, so at the end of battle, I have lost this much HP and my XP has also changed, right? So now if I save the game, my party should be saved along with all the changes in HP, XP and all that. So let me actually stop the game and play again. So I'll press L to load the saved state. And now if I start a battle, you can see that the HP and XP that I saved was restored properly. All right, and you can try changing the HP and XP of the other Pokemon in the party, and they also should be restored correctly. Okay, so that's working correctly. But the one thing that we are not saving right now is the moves of the Pokemon, right? So I've used Ember multiple times before I saved. But BP is still 20. So let's look at how to save the moves of the Pokemon. So to save the move, again we don't have to save the entire move class. Instead, I'll create a class called move save data, just like we did for the Pokemon. Alright. So let me open my move script. And below the move class. I'll create another class called move save data. All right, and I'll make this class serializable. So, what are the fields that we need to save for a move? So, inside move base, we just have to save the name, and using that, we can retrieve the entire move base class. All right. So we have to save the name and then we can save the PP, right? So that's all we need to save. So first I create a field for the name and then I'll create a field for the PP. So next I'll create a public function to get the save data. Okay, so in here, first I'll create an instance of move save data. So first I'll assign the name. And then I'll assign the PP. Okay, and finally I'll just return the save data. So the same stuff that we did for the Pokemon, but here 
we only have two fields to save okay so next i'll create a constructor to restore the save data so this will take move save data as the parameter and in here i'll restore the pp and to restore the move base we need a way to get a move using its name right so just like we did for the pokemon i am going to create a class called move db so inside scripts inside data i'll create a new class called move db okay so this is going to be a plain class and the logic in this class is going to be just like the logic that we wrote for pokemon db we need a function to init and we need a function to get the move by the name right and all the moves should be stored in a dictionary so since it's pretty much the same i'm not going to write all the code from scratch instead i'll just i'll just copy paste the code to save time okay so this is code we have a dictionary to store all the moves and we have an init function that will load all the moves and store it in the dictionary and finally we have a function to get a move by its name okay so we need to call the init function from the game controller all right so below the pokemon db i'll call move db dot init okay so now when restoring the move we can call move db dot get move by name and for the name i'll pass save data dot name okay so i'll restore this move base into our base property all right so that's all we have to restore so we have functions to get the save data of the move and restore a move using its save data so let's go ahead and save the moves of our pokemon so inside pokemon save data class i'll create a list to store the moves so this will be a list of move save data i'll call this moves all right so now while saving it we also have to assign the moves here so i'll say moves equal to the moves of the pokemon so this is actually a move class so we need to convert it into move save data so for all the move i'll call get save data function okay so now we must also restore the move so in this constructor instead of generating the moves again i'll restore it from our save data okay so to restore we need to convert the move save data into move class so again i'll use select to do that and for each save data i'll call the move constructor and pass the save data okay so let me restore it to our moves property okay so that's all we need to do so now the moves of the pokemon should be stored and restored so let's go ahead and test it all right so if i start a battle okay let me beat this Volbasa real quick 
all right so the purpose of fainted and i got a lot of xp and the charmander leveled up and learned a new move okay so let me actually forget growl and learn flamethrower okay so now if i go ahead and save the game and let me just restart the game and then load it all right so we have an error while loading it says move with name quick attack is not found in the database okay so the problem is we are using base start name over here so the name has small n so i have mentioned earlier if we use small n then it will take the name of the scriptable object right so we have to use capital n over here otherwise it won't work so i'll have to test saving the move once again so let me do that real quick All right, so we have learned flamethrower just like before. So now I'll go ahead and save the game. And now if we play the game and load, hopefully it should work. All right, so we don't have any error this time. So let's go ahead and start a battle. Okay, so if I look at my moves, you can see that the moves are restored correctly so here we have flamethrower which we learned in the last battle by forgetting growl and if you look at the ember you can see that its pp is 18 right since we used it two times so we are saving and loading all the moves of our pokemon correctly so i'll stop the video here and in the next video we will look at how to save state of the game before we switch scenes. Alright, so if you think this video is helpful, please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing to my channel. That will really help me out. And you can also support the series by becoming a Patreon. So, I'll see you in the next video.